the contradiction of this southern sector, we're just going to use our terminology, north, central, south, and the point is to, again, uh, this is this is this is a user created map. It's Project Owl. All credits to them. Uh, open source Intel. But so let's begin discussion. You're not going to see movement in either direction on on this sector. For the same reason, um, the it does it is it does not favor any type of Ukrainian counteroffensive, any thrust southwards. The uh, the Dnipro River definitely favors the Russian defense, and conversely, it also for the same reason, obvious reason that it it is it disadvantages any assaults, any breakouts in either direction. So what you're seeing here is just a mass of men, you know, basically units tied down. So uh, they can't vacate. They can't. They can't. They can't really break out into any real offensive here. So the Russians have this, they seem to have this secured and the Dnipro River as a choke point most definitely favors Russian defense. So um, any attempts by, I believe any attempts by the Ukrainians to try to thrust downwards, southwards here, that's just uh, lunacy. And again, as we talked about, when you see a potential vulnerability in we take no sides. We have to. We, you have to put yourself in a value-neutral perspective. So we're we're gonna we're gonna be analyzing from the Russian perspective. When you see a potential vulnerability, rest assured, the adversary sees the same fucking vulnerability. So, but in terms of theory, which is useless, you know, basically, uh, you can have a dictator staring up at a ceiling and he comes up with this idea you know, this Battle of the Bulge, and, you know, then uh, all of the generals are overrided, and, you know, you have no choice but to test the theory of a dictator. Uh, we're talking about the German dictator, but basically, uh, the natural point of vulnerability, it seems to make theoretical sense for the Russians to try to push up along this this front here, where you have, where, where you have, where basically the Ukrainians, um, where you have this this contour of the River Dnipro as a choke point to to basically to push north on this sector and eventually seek to capture the uh, Zaporizhia Oblast city whatever the entirety along the eastern bank of the River Dnipro basically to expand to to basically join this line of control and link it up to Zaporizhia. Of course, the Ukrainians likely perceive what has already been, what I can think of has already been thought of by every Russian general. <laughs> Pretty much guarantee that. Um, so the question I have is, what is stopping the Russian forces from amassing maybe there's international law reasons, but basically amassing along Belarus and either seeking a diversionary um, campaign, a diversionary thrust to basically put the adversary completely off kilter to open up some type of second front or to go for a, a major political symbolic victory by making what is stopping the Russians from amassing north and seeking the shortest path to capturing the portion of Kiev along the western west bank of the river Dnipro? It seems the logic would be to amass here and to do a mass to do a rapid thrust onto Kiev. Now that idea has parallels to prior history, uh, think about the Imperial Army's rush upon Nanking. Symbolic victory. Not symbolic, but also there's different dynamics, but it is not exactly parallel to Stalingrad or the or the where basically the conquest of Nanking by the Imperial Army. But you you would imagine 
the idea is to break out of this, break out of this, any type of stalemate, throw the adversary off guard, if not go, if not attempt to deliver an incapacitating blow and end the war.